LB agar plates are commonly used to culture individual bacterial colonies from freezer stocks or to select individual populations from complicated bacterial mixtures. In this video, we'll walk you through the steps for making LB agar plates. We'll show you all the materials you'll need for the process, show you how to sterilize your plates, indicate best practices during plate pouring, and we'll demonstrate how to test your plates. By the end of this video, you should be able to prepare LB agar plates with your antibiotic of interest. To begin the plate pouring process, we'll gather all of our necessary materials. First, we have our LB agar powder. For every liter of molten agar that we make, we'll measure out 37 grams of pre-mixed LB agar powder consisting of 5 grams of peptone, 10 grams of peptone from casein, 10 grams of sodium chloride, and 12 grams of agar agar. These items can be bought pre-mixed or you can buy each separately. We prefer to buy them pre-mixed to save time. This composition will make 1.2% agar plates. Next, we have our sterile water. Our goal is to make 30 gels in 60mm by 15mm plates, each of which can hold roughly 5 to 7 ml of LB agar. On plates this size, you can easily distinguish about 100 individual colonies. If you're going to be doing high volume screening, we recommend larger plates. For the 30 plates, we only need roughly 200 ml of water, but just in case we spill a little along the way, we'll add 220 ml to start. Because we will be using these plates for selection, we'll need antibiotic. We keep our antibiotics as stock solutions at 1000x concentration and dilute them as necessary. Next comes our glassware and disposables. We will make the 220 ml of molten LB agar in a 500 ml bottle. Your bottle should always have plenty of extra volume so your LB agar doesn't boil over in the autoclave. We will use the sterile pipettes to aliquot the gel mix. Finally, we'll use the autoclave tape to label our bottle. Now that we have everything ready, it's time to start making our plates. The first step is to measure out the LB agar powder. It takes 37 grams of powder to make 1 liter of gel mix. Since we only need 220 ml of gel mix, we will measure out 8.14 grams of LB agar powder. Now we add the LB agar powder and the sterile water to the bottle and swirl to form a colloid. Do not make the seal airtight. An airtight seal can lead to cracking during the sterilization process. Next, we add a piece of autoclave tape to the bottle. Autoclave tape darkens when it has spent at least 10 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius in the autoclave and lets us know our LB agar has reached the appropriate sterilization temperature. We also add a piece of lab tape to the bottle with our initials, the date, and the bottle contents. This will clear up any confusion should we accidentally leave our bottle in the autoclave or if somebody opens the autoclave before we do. Autoclaves are used to bring materials and media to high temperature at high pressure. The high temperature sterilizes our materials while the high pressure keeps liquids from boiling over. Some organisms and certain spores can, however, survive in the harsh conditions of the autoclave. Be sure to check the literature for the appropriate sterilization techniques if you're working with any weird and wonderful organisms. To begin, we place our LB agar colloid in the autoclave and seal the door. We then set the autoclave to reach 121 degrees Celsius under 20 PSI for 20 minutes and start the autoclave cycle. Do not use the autoclave if you have not been properly trained. While the LB agar is sterilizing in the autoclave, we will prepare our bench for plate pouring. First, we find or make an empty section of bench with a working flame. Then we spray down the bench with 70% ethanol and wipe it with a paper towel. Once the bench is clean, we count out the appropriate number of plates and leave them stacked in an easily accessible location. Be careful not to stack them too high, lest we have an architectural disaster. Now we label our plates with the medium and the antibiotic they will contain. We recommend using a batch labeling system to speed up this process. For instance, we simply label our bags instead of our plates. If you label your plates in more detail, be sure to write on the bottom of the plates instead of the top. Next, we take our antibiotic out of the freezer. We keep our antibiotic stored as 1000x stock solutions and dilute these as necessary. Most antibiotics can be stored in water, but some, like chloramphenicol, must be stored in other solvents, like ethanol. Check with the antibiotics manufacturer for further details. We next set a water bath to 60 degrees Celsius, making sure that the water bath has enough water to submerge about 75% of our molten LB agar bottle. We will cool the LB agar mix in the water bath once the autoclave cycle is complete. 60 degrees Celsius is a good temperature because it's warm enough for the LB agar to remain in liquid form, yet cool enough that most antibiotics will not denature. 
Once the autoclave cycle is complete, it's time to retrieve our bottle of molten LB agar. When handling anything coming out of the hot autoclave, you should always wear thermally protective gloves. Before we retrieve our agar, it's good practice to leave the autoclave door open, just a crack, for about 10 minutes. This will allow any excess steam to escape and will cool our samples slightly. After 10 minutes, we fully open the autoclave, remove our samples, and leave the autoclave door open just a crack, as a courtesy to the next user. Next, we place the bottle with the molten LB agar mix into the 60 degrees Celsius water bath, submerging about 75% of the bottle. Be careful not to let any of the water bath water touch the lip or the top of the bottle, as this water is not likely to be sterile. After at least 5 minutes, we remove our molten gel mix from the water bath. As a good rule of thumb, if you can hold the bottle with lab gloves, it's likely cool enough to add antibiotic. You can use a laser thermometer for a more accurate temperature measurement. To begin the plate pouring process, we light the flame at our gel pouring station and dilute our antibiotic into the 60 degrees Celsius agar mix. We're adding 220 microliters because we're diluting our antibiotic 1 to 1000 into 220 milliliters of agar. Once the antibiotic is added, it's time to start pouring our plates. It's usually faster, easier, and more sterile to pour the molten gel mix straight from the bottle. However, it's good practice to measure out the first couple of plates using a sterile pipette until you get a good feel for the appropriate volume. Don't worry if you overfill or spill a little. That's why we made 220 milliliters of LB agar instead of 200. You'll get the hang of it, and before you know it, you'll be a plate pouring pro. As you pour your plates, be careful to recap them quickly, since that little flame certainly won't kill everything that could fall on them. We stack our plates in piles of about five as we pour. Make sure you swirl each plate after you pour it. If your LB agar partially solidifies, you should stop pouring and remake the gel mix. If you're making plates without any antibiotic, you can alternatively reliquify the LB agar by running it through the autoclave again or by microwaving. If you microwave, beware of overboiling. It takes roughly 30 minutes for our plates to solidify at room temperature. However, we leave them out overnight to allow them to dry. Once dry, we place the plates in a plastic bag with an absorbent material to reduce condensation. For long-term storage, we keep our plates in the cold room at 4 degrees Celsius. Even when stored at this temperature, plates should always be checked for contamination prior to use and should never be stored for more than a month. Once our plates have solidified and dried, we test them to make sure the antibiotic functions properly. To do so, we pull out two plates. On the first plate, we streak out a strain that we know to be resistant to the antibiotic. On the second plate, we streak out a strain that's not resistant to the antibiotic. We then incubate both plates overnight at the appropriate growth temperature. If we prepared our plates properly, only the resistant strain should grow. If only the resistant strain grows, our plates are ready for use or storage at 4 degrees Celsius. Isolating individual colonies on plates is a crucial step in many experiments because colonies arise from single bacteria and are considered isogenic. Thank you for watching our plate pouring protocol video. If you'd like to watch more videos or browse more written molecular biology protocols, please visit our website and blog, Agene, a better way to share science.